Interesting. I mean, always interesting when Nikki Javala does reporting. She's very good at it. Uh, but very, very enlightening piece, I would say, today in the Washington Post. About 1 o'clock this afternoon, Nikki published a piece with some more insight into the process that Josh Harris is going through. We've known, obviously, it feels like for weeks, but since Monday, uh, you know, seven weeks ago Monday, uh, when that, that there was going to be this committee, that it was going to be Josh Harris, it was going to be Mitchell Rails, it was going to be Magic Johnson, the three most significant stakeholders in the commanders, uh, quite literally speaking, uh, that it was going to be uh, Rick Spielman, former NFL general manager, and it was going to be Bob Myers, architect of the Warriors dynasty, uh, and friend of Josh Harris, who is one of the best culture builders that we've seen in professional sports in the last quarter century. And I think when we all heard that, we thought there would be like this, you know, round table of wise men that were sitting around and they would interview candidates and uh, it would be around the fire, obviously, because that's where wise men sit. Uh, in reality, is it Josh Harris's extremely nice home in Miami, uh, which may or may not have a fire pit that may or may not be used. I don't know. Uh, But what it turns out is it's actually a way smarter deployment than getting a bunch of people in a board, a board, you know, room or at Josh Harris's house around a large table and five people conducting an interview of one. That is one way to do it. And considering the group of people, it would probably yield pretty solid results. But what they're doing is actually way better, which is to it just to split these people into different groups and have them all interview the candidates separately. Now, why is this important and why is the grouping important? You're trying to figure out different things from different people, right? Josh Harris kind of is over everything. Bob Meyer's job is to see what is this person's thought or what are the what are these people's thoughts on culture and organization building? Though that to me based off Bob's resume is what he is most qualified to look at is how do you view culture and culture building and how do you view organizational uh, communications and organizational structure? Like if you're in charge of the front office, the thing that I used to be in the NBA, what people do you want working for you, with you, beside you, under you, and what do you want from ownership? How do you manage up? And what they've done is said, okay, Bob Myers, you're going to sit with Josh Harris and conduct that interview because I think they view what Bob brings as maybe the most important piece. And so Josh wants to be in the room to hear the answers for himself. I think that's great. I think that's smart. The other person that they met in the first round of interviews was Rick Spielman, who his sole job really, I mean, obviously he's got thoughts. These are all multifaceted people, but to simplify it and boil it down, his responsibility is football. I want to know from Rick Spielman what he thinks about your thoughts as a candidate on where the NFL is schematically, you know, personnel-wise, all of the football X's and O's things, and where it's going. Who are your connections in the league in terms of coaches? Who do you like? Why do you like them? Why do you think you can build with them? Do you think that the way you scout works with the way they coach? Do you think that the systems that they, you know, your top choices or maybe even our top choices want to run, that you know how to scout for those systems? If you are an analytics person, how are you going to cover the scouting side of things? If you're a scouting person, how are you going to work with the analytics department? If you're a cat person, how do you work with both? And then obviously, how does cat fit on the other stuff? Like there's there's multiple prongs of a front office. How do you see them working together from the football side of it to make sure that you understand clearly vision wise, what do you bring f- football concentrated, right? That's Rick Spielman's part. But what I don't necessarily want is Bob Myers or Josh Harris interjecting their football thoughts into that conversation. And so what did they do? They separated it out because, you know, I think it's a lot easier if, say, they're all in that room together and Rick's asking football questions and, you know, the football guy's giving football answers. And if I'm in that room and I'm Josh Harris and I've been around the NFL up close for five and a half months, I've watched football my whole life. Uh, If I'm Bob Myers and I've been around the San Francisco 49ers a bunch, which apparently he was out in San Fran, 
you know, I don't want they say something that I like that Rick Spielman doesn't like. I hired Rick to be the football guy. So let him do the football stuff. If you wanted more football people and different football opinions, they should have hired more football people to be in those rooms. And by the way, the hope is to hire Ian Cunningham or Adam Peters at this point as they remain the final two candidates and have them be in the room for that part of it when you hire the head coach, which, by the way, is way more important on the football stuff. The X's and O's becomes way more important the closer you get to the field. Really, the general manager's job or the vice president or whatever the hell position they get, their job is to find the players to fit the vision of the coach. The coach sets the vision. Um, Or, I do think, this is a bit of a sidebar, but having an organizational vision that goes multiple coaches down the road um, is not the worst thing either. That way you don't wind up for a very simple example, building a 4-3 defense, then you go hire a 3-4 coach, then back and forth. But like you do want some things that are are high-level football uh, vision from your front office, but the details shift can shift fairly dramatically at the coaching level. So that's that's the next step. Then the last part of your search committee is actually the part that's interviewing the finalists. Okay, you've come out of those interviews. And if you're Ian Cunningham and you're Adam Peters, presumably you're the only people, like you were the top candidates for both sides, right? So Myers and Harris do their interviews. They're like, yes. Uh, Spielman does his interviews. He's like, yes. And if there's yes, yes, you advanced. If there's yes, no, you're going to talk about it, but probably not. And if it's no, no, then it's pretty easy. That person doesn't get a second interview. And I don't know whether they're going full binary, yes or no. Uh, or whether they are kind of ranking their candidates and they chose the top two uh, because they wanted two or because they want these guys to work together or because there was like a clear cutoff in terms of how they ranked it. It It's like, hey, this is our first tier. Um, Whatever. Those guys made it through. And now they will go meet with Mitchell Rails and Magic Johnson, which I think is pretty cool. Like, okay, you you passed the first barrier you passed bob and in, in the culture test uh josh didn't hate you and you were in that meeting um you talked football well enough to impress rick spielman now let's go talk about building a, an organization with magic johnson one of the greatest winners in the history of professional sports and mitchell rails who's built uh, it's not countless but the numbers high multi-million dollar companies people who understand what it takes to win in multiple avenues, right? Magic as a player in the NBA, um, as a part of, you know, he was in some of those Lakers front offices. Obviously, his time leading a front office wasn't the best when he was the general manager of the Lakers. He did land LeBron James, which did work out all right. Um, But he's built a billion-dollar company, and there's real estate, and there's movie theaters, and there's this, and there's that. Um, He's been involved with Starbucks, and, like, he's, he's done a lot of stuff successful in multiple different avenues. Same thing with Mitchell Rails. Um, built multiple companies in different avenues. So if you can convince those guys that you're the right one for the job, then you bring the committee back together, everybody kumbayas and powwows, and then hopefully they, uh, you know, then it's on Josh to to bring the mathematicians into the room and figure out what the money is, and the negotiators and the lawyers and figure out what the contract looks like. I freaking love that process. And I know that there are some folks who are commentators in town um, most prominently, I'm not, I'm not trying to throw shade. Like Tom Lavero wrote an article that he doesn't like it for whatever reason. And I, I get it on some level that you want your owner just to be able to go do it. Like, Hey man, you don't need a committee, like go hire the person, um, or whatever the arguments are made. I think there is no better process than bringing smart people together with different perspectives and then creating a system to allow the perspectives to shine. And that to me is what they've done. They haven't just brought a bunch of people in the room to hear a bunch of milk toast answers. They're letting the experts expert in their area of expertise, all of which is relevant to the actual hire itself, and then they will make the hire. And I think not only is that going to help you sort through uh, and find the best person, but remember, interviews are two ways, especially for people as smart as Ian Cunningham and Adam Peters and uh, Alec Hallaby and, and, and Glenn Cook and all the people that got interviewed here. Bunch of really smart, highly accomplished people who interview other people all the time. They interview draft prospects every year. They interview scouts. Like These are people that have done hiring themselves. So it's a two-way street. You are doing the interview, 
But these are people that are going to have options and they have to decide, do I want to go work for those people? This is a good way to sell yourself to them too. And especially, especially for a guy like Peters who has a very easy seat to go back to in San Francisco and it is going to take convincing to peel him away. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.